everyone, and welcome back to Jesse Heck Creative. Today we're going over two different Scarlet Spiders and Molten Man from Marvel Legends. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. Now let's get to it. So here's Ben Riley, the Scarlet Spider. Let's check him out. Scarlet Spider's head sculpt is very simple, very pointed chin. I believe we'll see this head sculpt sometime later on. But it's mostly red, white, with a little bit of black around the eyes. Very nice. The body sculpt is pretty unique. It's a hoodie. It looks really cool. I like the slight rubber of these aglets over here, as well as the string going towards the hoodie. It looks really good. On the front, we have a spider, you know, right over here. That's really neat. It has eight legs. Looks pretty cool. It kind of, you know, goes really, like, big and on the abdomen when you move the chest, but that's fine. There are some wrinkles over here, and this belt looks really nice. Utility belt. It's pretty cool. I've got these very, very chromed out silver, you know, web shooters that have some lines on them that don't look that great, but they could be molded, whatever. The back is a really tiny spider over here. There's the hoodie right there. The hoodie mold is pretty cool, but there is a seam line for that. But it's a nice torso sculpt overall. The legs are super simple, plain. He has these, like, I think extra web shooters over here on his ankles, which are pretty interesting. There is this again. And yeah, it's just mostly red. It looks nice. As far as accessories goes, he comes with these wall crawling hands that are pretty cool. They can swivel and then hinge. We've seen these before, but they're always good to see. I like them a lot. He comes with whip hands and they're pretty neat. They can swivel and hinge as we've seen before, but it's always good to have whip hands in a Spider-Man arsenal. His final accessory is a pair of fists that are pretty cool. You could swivel and also hinge them to your delight. They're the same mold we've seen before, but no less helpful. One thing I want to mention is that this is an older figure, so these are older styled pegs. They're actually pretty neat, but I like the newer ones better. They're just easier to put on, I guess, as opposed to these weird double mushroom pegs. This head sculpt is from the unmasked retro carded Ben Riley Scarlet Spider head sculpt. Woo! Yeah, I used it for Fantastic Four Johnny Storm. It is a good figure head sculpt. It is the Peter Parker head sculpt just in blonde hair and that's basically it the hair looks really nice and slick back it looks really great that smirk really reminds me of Johnny though so I gave it to him it works well on this body you could swivel it you can hinge it back and forth it works out fine so as far as articulation goes for Scarlet Spider the head goes back this far forward this far you get some swivel and then a little bit tiny bit of pivot which works out pretty well the arm goes up this far down this far all the way around you get a swivel at the bicep you get double joint elbows you also get a crunch back this far, exposing the spider and foreshortening this one. And all the way down, which actually has a really nice spider imprint on the back, going down this far. We also have a waist swivel right over here that kind of upsets the belt. You may have to put it back into place and just shove it in there. I don't really know why they have this kind of function, which is really weird. It just goes to the shirt. It's very strange. Out this far, in all the way up pretty far back is pretty okay all the way back very nice nice articulation around here nothing go down there you get it down up and then pivot with two pegos bottom of his big duck feet nice looking figure really cool I like this one more than the retro that I passed on and got rid of but it's still cool to have this guy. Scarlet Spider-Man stands at just under six inches tall next to the pizza Spider-Man they both look good together but I think I like the red and blue of the Scarlet Spider more than the Pizza Spider-Man in this iteration. And also here's Jesse Heck Creative. Frankly, my dear, we're all out of clams. So here's another Scarlet Spider. This time, instead of Ben, it's Kane. Let's check him out. Kane's head is pretty good. It is a one big black void with red eyes. I feel like the red eyes are a little bit painted wrong, and it's a good head nonetheless with a quizzical expression. Huh? The body's really done well, butterfly joints and all, nice articulation for a Spider-Man, very bulky too. This spider symbol is amazing, the nice angular legs as well as the teardrop abdomen and the pincers right over here. On the back, it's in black, and it's really nice how the contours of the body lend well to the spider symbol, as well as the different look of the red fading into black and black fading into red. It looks really nice and awesome. The legs are plain red. It's fine, except for this thing on the back. That's a shame. In later years, they put it on the bottom of the feet, but they didn't think that till then. So yeah, red legs. As far as accessories goes, Kane comes with two fists. They are pretty cool. They have red on the outer part of the gloves, and then for the fingers, it's all in black. 
It's pretty neat. Same for this one. They both swivel and then hinge on the wrist like every other fist we've seen for Spider-Man. He also comes with these really spiky hands that are pretty weird. This one has it coming out of his palm, and this one has it coming out of his palm. The paint isn't really that great over here. My big issue is this one's really loose and wobbly and comes out pretty easily, so that's a shame. They both swivel and then hinge, this one working way better than this one over here. I figured out it's the hand itself, so it's not really, you know, an issue of the body, which is a big shame. I may have to find a replacement for this and figure it out. Kane also has this zombified Peter Parker head, an older Peter Parker head, which is really interesting. I like how strange it looks. I think it's part of a failed clone experiment or something, but the skin is really pale and really weird and also tight on the ball joint. The hair isn't really painted that well over by the ear. The ears look great, but it kind of gives more credence that this guy is weird and insane and strange. The eyes are whited out. The beard looks really good. The back of the head looks fine with the hair. Top of the head looks really good with the hair. It's a very nice head sculpt with very creepy paint. The head sculpt also swivels and then hinges on the joint. I noticed some weird imperfections in the sculpting right here on the line and another line over here and here which gives credence that this is a clone i'm not sure if they're vein lines or not but they look really weird i like it as far as articulation goes for kane the head goes back this far forward this far you get a swivel right over here and a little bit of attitude pivot you get a butterfly joint going back and forth pretty well you get going up this far down all the way around you get a swivel right over here a double joint elbow that works out pretty okay. A swivel and a hinge. We've already done that. Back right over here. Forward right over here. Swivel right over here. Very clicky. Very nice. Out this far. Pretty okay. In this far. Up. And then back. And then all the way back. It's pretty alright. We get the swivel over here. A swivel down here. And dun and dun and pivot. Two pegels on the feet. Yeah. Nice body mold. Very good sculpting. Shame that hand didn't work out, but that's just a manufacturing error I didn't catch until now. Kane stands at just about six inches tall next to Scarlet Spider, his other brother with the same name. They're pretty cool together. They look nice. The reds are really vibrant. I love that a lot. And you get a different body type too. They're pretty neat. Also, here's Jesse Heck Creative. I'm telling you the truth. There's none left. I know that Kane needs to feed, but we're all out of clams. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. So here's Molten Man. Let's look at this guy. It's hard to see now, but Molten Man's eyes are a piercing white. The shadows make him look kind of weird, but yeah, they're pearly, really white. Almost silver. That's really great. The whole head's in gold, though, so yeah, that's basically it. Not much texture, not much, you know, paint, just sculpt. Yeah. There it is. The entire body head to toe is gold. Yeah, all he has is his belt that's free floating. And it's all just, you know, the same sculpt, I think, as Kane. So, yeah, that's basically it. What a time to choose this figure, huh? It's all gold. It's not bland to me, though. I really like it. The highlights and shine. Whenever you move him, it changes. And it just looks so cool. I really love this body. It's really neat. We have a great peg hole at the back, too. That works out pretty well for the figure. Looks very nice. As far as accessories goes, he comes with two fists that are just plain old fists. You can swivel them and then hinge them right over here on the wrist. It work out nice. He comes with one flame fisted hand and one flame grabbing hand. So you can swivel and then hinge back not that far because the flame and forward works out pretty well. As well as swivel and then hinge forward, hinge back. I would prefer two fists, but I thought they were reusing these, so I'll cut them slack. But this looks really cool to me. In addition to flaming hands, he comes with flaming feet or ankles, I guess. You could use Idoni's hands, but I think it kind of breaks up the colors if you put them on his legs. These look really cool. These are usually used for, like, magic effects, but putting them on his feet work out fine. They look really nice and super cool. And, yeah, they were great as flames. I wish I had more, though, just put throughout his whole body. And finally, he comes with one last accessory, this sort of flame cape thing that looks pretty cool. You can just put it on his shoulders, like a flame shawl, really. It has a hard time staying on, though. If you do this, it just comes off, and that's one of my big gripes about the figure. But everything else is just perfect. I love this guy. He looks super cool. Especially with all the flames attached. He looks wonderful. As far as articulation goes for Molten Man, we have his head which can go back this far, forward this far. We also get a swivel and then you can pivot if you like a little bit. 
you get up this far, down this far, and then all the way around with heavy detents on that. You get a swivel back, forward with the butterfly joint. You also get a swivel right over here. You go up, pretty good, down. You also get on his chest, back, pretty fine. Forward, really good, I love that. Swivel right over here. You can move the belt down or up and for it a little bit up and over the articulation point so it doesn't really mess it up. Works out fine. Out, whoa, really far. Love it, that's great. In, and then you also get up this far, really good. And then back, pretty okay. Back, that's all right, I like it. Down, and then around, and then around, and then down, up, and you get a pivot right over here with heavy detents and two peg holes at the bottom of the feet. I definitely love Molten Man. He's one of my favorites from that five pack that I'm slowly going through in this Spider-Man filled review section. I really like this guy a lot and he's super cool. Molten Man stands a tiny bit above six inches tall next to the Scarlet Spiders. They all look good together. He does look a bit scrawny to me, I think, though he's on the same body mold as the Scarlet Spider in the middle, which is weird. He looks pretty buff, so why isn't Molten Man? Interesting. And also here's Jesse Heck Creative. And I'd like to thank the Academy for this incredibly heavy and angry looking award. You tolerate me. You really tolerate me. Overall, we get three really good figures here. They're all nicely done and true to the comic characters. The Scarlet Spider Ben Riley is really nice looking. I love the hoodie. The spider on it looks really great. I'm not a fan of how the belt integrates with the hoodie, but you had to make some sacrifices to make it look like it's going over the belt, so that's basically it. The kit bashing with this head looks really nice, and the body just looks like great with all these colors. I love the hoodie too, it's wonderful, especially those little aglets and straps. Kane Scarlet Spider is pretty neat, I'm not a fan of how that one open palmed hand works, but the rest of the figure is really solid. I like the evil Peter Parker clone head that looks great and zombified, and that spider symbol is wonderful too on him. The spikes coming out of his hands gives a new flavor to Spider-Man and more threatening and somewhat demonic. Molten Man's awesome. I've been waiting him for so long because he's in the Spectacular Spider-Man TV series and he's just wonderful. I love the gold. It looks like he's dripping molten metal. It's awesome. The flames look really great on him too. He could be a little bit bulkier, but I just really love how he looks in this iteration. It's wonderful to finally get him in action figure form, and these two Scarlet Spiders are really great also. I love these three a lot, and they're wonderful. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jesseheckcreative.com, where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching, and keep being creative. Stay tuned!